What's up guys, um, I'm back, I haven't uploaded a video tutorial in about 9, 10 months I think, I've been working on the Olympics, um, so I haven't really had any time whatsoever to upload tutorials, but I'm back now, so hopefully I'll be um, uploading more regularly. I'm going to be starting off with requests, and today's request was displacement maps. Um, I just want to try and get round to any, as many of the videos that you guys want as I can first, and then I'll start uploading my own, so yeah, today is displacement maps. Um, for those of you that don't know what displacement maps are or what they do, um, my desktop background is one I created using displacement maps. It takes a, a background image and displaces it over the foreground image to fit the contours of whatever your image is. So if it was a face, the background would fit the contours of the face, so the curves and the shadow. And yeah, so that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and get to it. Um, so ho open up Photoshop. As you can see, I've got a picture opened up already. Um, that's because you have to remove the background of an image, um, of the image you're using, and that if I did that in this tutorial, it would take up too much time. I've already uploaded a tutorial on how to remove the background of an image, um, so if you don't know, I'll leave a link to that in the description, so you can go do that, and then come back to this tutorial. Um, so yeah, you're going to open up your two images. Um, so these are two I'm going to be using, the Union Jack and Melissa Clark here. So like I've said, I've removed the background already. Um, so once you have removed the background, uh, we can go ahead and drag this onto our original image. So in my case, the Union Jack, and scale this up. So I'm going to just place it there, then hit Edit, Free Transform, and I'm going to drag this to the size I want. Um, if your image looks a bit stretched or a bit disproportionate, up here it says width and height. Um, so you can check here. So for instance, my width my width's 150 and my height is 135. Um, my height should be 150 as well to match the width, but obviously because I'm trying to make it a desktop background, that's not going to work. But if yours does look overly stretched, then just check what that's at um, and make sure they match. So once you've done that, hit the little arrow and then hit apply um, and then that will apply that so the first thing we're going to want to do is head up to our layer 1 um, click this drag it down and duplicate it by bringing it onto this icon and then our original layer we're going to mute so that we can't see that then we're going to head back to our layer 1 copy um, head to image adjustments hue and saturation and we're going to completely desaturate it so it just turns to black and white then hit OK on that, then back up to Image, Adjustments again, and Levels. Um, and we're going to want to try and get rid of as much as the grass we can, so it's mainly black and white. Um, and you can do that by fiddling with these arrows. Um, to sort of get them... That's a bit over the top. Yeah, so we're trying to get rid of most of the grey. You don't want all the grey to be gone, but we're definitely trying to get rid of some of it. So if I move... This back down, that up a bit, like that. So that'll do. So there's there's still grey in there, but there's more black and white, um, and that'll create depth. So get your image looking something like that, and then just hit OK. Um, then head to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and we're gonna want to blur this blur this by about three pixels. Um, so I'm just gonna type in three, and hit OK. Okay, so now we've done this, this is going to be the template for our displacement map, so we're going to have to save this. So hit File, Save As, I'm going to save it to my desktop, and I'm literally just going to call it Displacement Map, if I could spell. Um, oh my god. But you know what that'll do, yeah. So I've missed an A and everything, but... So I'm going to save it to my desktop as a Photoshop file, I'm just going to save that. Um, OK the little pop up box then we're going to hit Control Alt and Z on our keyboard to bring it back to the saturated image um, so we head back a couple of steps just to the saturated image then on our background we're going to click on that on the layers tab and duplicate this as well by dragging it onto the same icon as earlier this one so duplicate that, oh I missed so yeah duplicate that then drag this to the top of the layers tab so it's overlaying the other three layers um, and head to filter distort displace um, make sure your horizontal scale and vertical scale are on about 20 to 25 you know whatever you feel like going with um, I'm going to go with 20 and then just hit OK and that will load up a little screen you want to then select 
where you saved your um, your template so displacement map open that up as you can see it will distort um, but it distorts the background as well as the foreground um, so we're going to want to change that so head to our layer 1 copy click on the right click on the little picture the little thumbnail um, and hit select pixels and then that will select the pixels for that image then highlight our background copy and click this little vector mask button um, or layer mask either one and then that should distort only the uh, the the layer one and not the background then we can turn the opacity down so hit the little drop down array array yeah hit the little drop down array now hit the little drop down arrow and drop that to whatever looks best well whatever you think looks best I'm gonna go with about 30 for now we still got a lot of re-editing to do so yeah yeah about there um, so the first thing I'm going to do with this is head back to make making sure I'm on my background copy head back to filter blur Gaussian blur and then I'm going to blur it by about one pixel and then hit OK on that um, and that will just stop it being so sharp and it will sort of blend with the face a bit more um, then we're going to head back down to our layer one copy um, head to image adjustments and curves um, and then just play around with these until you get it looking, you know, some somewhat like you want it. So I'm going to go with. Sort of that. I want it kind of darkish. Like that. That looks good to me. Um, and then hit OK. Play around with it. Get it looking how you want it to look. Um, then head back to our background copy. So this one that we created the layer mask on. Um, head to your rubber. And you're going to want to, like. I don't want the flag to be going over the hair and stuff, um, so I'm going to erase that. And the best thing to do when erasing is have your sort of brush hardness on about zero percent because it just it blends more and it helps to feather it and make it look a bit better. So I'm literally going to rub out over the hair, making sure we got our background copy selected. I'm literally just going to rub out as much as I can. Um, I'm hoping you are going to take your time a bit more and kind of make it look a bit better. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to erase all this, even on the pillow where she was laying. Um, let me zoom in a bit down here. Something like this. Now, once you've finished erasing the hair, or whatever, or if, if you want to erase the hair, that is, I then move to erasing from the eyes, because obviously I overlays the eyes and you don't want that. Um, so again, I'm keeping my my eraser hardness on around about 0% because it just helps it to blend um, and then I'm going to select my eraser size up the square brackets, left one makes it smaller, one makes it bigger and just erase as I can and try and get it looking as natural as I can so I'm going to go over the eyelash but not on the skin because I don't want any grey showing any grey from the skin um, like I've just done there like so fit this to screen see how that looks yeah that looks decent enough um right so i'm going to go ahead and do this with the rest of the face um, like the facial features and then i'll be right back okay i'm back um so i've erased the flag from the eyes um and a tad from the nostril when you when you're doing like any dark areas that you don't want to have the flag over or you just want them to be the original color kind of try and dab um with the eraser instead of just erasing because then you're going to get more solid lines the more you dab the more feathered it's going to look and the more like blended and natural it's going to look so yeah um, I thought I'd show you how I do the lips because they are really hard to get um, they can look really fake um, if you if you don't get the blending right if they're really sharp it looks really fake so I'm literally just going to again with my brush on zero I'm going to keep it quite big because um, the bigger the brush the more the feathering um, so once I've finished I shouldn't have gone that far so yeah, I'm literally just keeping the brush fairly big, uh, maybe a tad smaller when going into this bit. But again, dab there, uh, fit that to screen. So that looks fairly natural, I guess. That looks kind of bad there, but um, I couldn't do anything about that. So yeah, um, take your time with yours and try and get it looking as good as you can. I'm trying to rush because I don't want to waste too much time in the way of the tutorial
because we're already on 10 minutes um, so this is going to take ages to upload um, see the darker areas that you want so for instance behind the nose, the nose is sort of blending into the face because it's the exact same on the bright side as it is on the dark side yeah so with the dark side what you can do is if you just grab your um, lasso and you don't have to be too careful with it, just as rough as you like um, sort of go around the contour of the nose um, like this so this this whole side of the face um, we can darken a bit, so once you've selected that if you had to select modifier and feather and feather, feather it by about 5 pixels, hit OK and then head to image adjustments, brightness and contrast and just turn the brightness down to about well 100, minus 150 in this case just play around with it, get it looking as good as you can hit OK and then hit control and D to deselect as you can see the nose stands out a tad more now um, if I oh so yeah the nose stand, stands out a tad more because all this is a bit darker um, so yeah one more thing I like to do um, if I click on my original background now um, get back to the eraser, size the brush up massive um, make sure you're running white on black down here so if it's like that just hit this little arrow to switch it and then with your brush remember still on hardness of zero just sort of click like that and it will darken the background a bit and bring out the foreground a bit more like that um, so yeah and that is it that is displacement maps. Um, I hope this helped. I hope you took a bit more time with yours and yours looks a bit better than mine. But Yeah, so thanks for watching. Um, if my tutorial was a bit bad, that is because it's my first time back in like ten months. So you're gonna have to <laughs> you're gonna have to bear with me. But yeah, that was displacement maps. Um, I should be uploading more as soon as I can. Cheers.